putting this theory about the sampling distribution of a variance into a specific operational form of a confidence interval for one variance. How can we make this confidence interval? Well, here's the formula. And now this is an operational, this is a specific formula. This is not just a theoretical consideration anymore. This is taking a computed sample variance times n minus 1 and dividing it first by one number and then the same thing is divided by another number and the two numbers that we are dividing with is coming from the chi-square like this. It's not symmetric anymore. So it's the chi-square alpha half and chi-square 1 minus alpha half here. Giving alpha half probability to the right of it and alpha half probability to the left of this. And, and we have to find both because it's not, it's not symmetrical. Also, note that the formula has a relative form now. It's not an additive constructed formula. When we look at variances, we have to think relative in this way for things to be correct. Let's do it, of course. Let's uh, think about the, the story that we are having. We have now sampled n equal 20 tablets. We estimate the mean of those tablets at, again, I've been too sloppy here. It should be small x equals 1.01. .01. That looks pretty much okay, or assuring, right? The target for these tablets was supposed to be one milligram per gram. So at least, I mean, without, without subject matter knowledge, of course, we, we wouldn't know whether this 1% off target, whether that's important or not. Of course, that, that requires knowledge of these things, what is usually considered important from uh, when you produce tablets. That, but that would be a knowledge which would be known in the system when you are, you are there. I would sort of expect that that may, be, that may be okay, actually. And the variance was computed at 0.07. That is, the standard deviation was 0.07, and the variance is the square of this. Let's try to find out a confidence interval for this variance now. What should we do? We should take n minus 1 times the computed variance divided by something less than the same. n minus 1 times the computed variance divided by something what should we, we divide by? Yeah, we should find these two, we should find these two quantiles in the chi-square distribution. Let's go find them in the two ways we can find them. There is also a quantile function. We should have the 97.5%. We should use how many degrees of freedom? 19. This number was 32. We should also find the 2.5% point like this. Both are positive. And here's uh, why I, I wouldn't... I, this is something I usually recommend. Don't try to spend too much time in trying to keep track of which is which of these two. I mean, there is uh, ample room for becoming confused about this alpha half and one minus alpha half, which is which, and uh, especially because the book notation, as we've seen so many times, is opposite to the R notation. So what is alpha half in the book is one minus alpha half in Q chi square and vice versa, right? So there is lots of room for not being able to have this uh, straight in your mouth or in your head. So 
This is an example of where, well, don't try, do it, because it, it, it makes, it's pretty clear what, sh what you should do when you find the two numbers. The two numbers were 32 and 8.91. Let me see if I have them such that I, yes, good. I don't have to remember it. Because when we look at the formula that we are going to find, then of course we should, to the left here, which should be the smaller value, we should divide by the large one of the two, right? And of course that is the right one then. So that's 32.852. And 8.907. We can put it into our pocket calculator or use R. I did that already, so let me just give the result here. I get 0 0.002834, let me use a lot of decimal here, less than 0 0.0145. Now, um, What about, so basically this was the result. However, however, looking at a variance is almost always a bit uh, uneasy or, or not so uh, informative. Often it's much nicer to look at the standard deviation because the standard deviation comes on the scale of sort of on the original measurements and not on some odd squared scale where we, it's difficult to interpret what does the numbers, uh, what the numbers really mean. What if, what if I said calculate the confidence interval for the standard deviation, sigma? What if this was the task? Well, here's the nice thing here. It is completely valid it is completely valid to sort of just apply the square rule because it's a probability statement and applying a square root does not change the event that we are looking at. So applying the square root means that we can take the square root of 0.002834 it's less than sigma, less than the square root of 0.01045. And then, of course, we just have to find the numbers. And we have something that we can interpret better in terms of what we were told so far. Oh, it disappeared on me. There it was. That the standard deviation is between... 0.053 and 0.10, I mean, the computed standard deviation was 0.07. The confidence interval is somewhere between 0 0.5, 0 0.05, and 0.10. Please note that with 20 observations, there is a factor 2 in the uncertainty, you could say, uh, on the standard deviation. Which, so if the standard deviation information is really important, it's really important to know what the standard deviation is, and sometimes it will be for c production companies like Lundbeck to prove to authorities, to FDA and others, that they, they produce with a low uh, variability. Then maybe 20 tablets is far too little to achieve a good and nice and uh, narrow confidence interval for the variance. Good. So far, so good. That was actually the confidence interval. I think I'll surprise you and make an early break here. Let's do a 15 minutes uh, early break.
I actually let you off two minutes too early. I forgot what I promised to do. I forgot that I was going to uh, find these critical values, as we could also call them here, actually. Um, I found them in R, but I did plan and promise to also show them to you in the table. So let's just do that, as I promised. We could also find the critical values for the confidence limit in table five in the book. As you can say, table five, C, table five are values of chi square alpha. And you can see, now what was new, degrees of freedom, that's actually n minus one. n was 20, so degrees of freedom was 19. And the relevant ones we should look at was alpha equal to 0.975 and alpha equal to 0.025, right? And hopefully we will recognize the same two numbers as we found in R a minute ago or before the break, right? So we could also use table five to find those values. Of course, I recommend R, that's much more general. Also, you can see in table five, I only have these alpha values. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight alpha values to choose from. But hey, there is a continuum infinitely many, of infinitely many different alpha values that you might want to look at. So, uh, and that one you have available in Q chi-square or for that sake in p chi-square, which is the inverse of q chi-square in r. So that's of course, uh, if, if you can do the r thing, you don't need the table, right? Question? Yeah, um, are the values uh, x squared uh, alpha, was that, was that the same as the x squared alpha uh, half or divided by two? Uh, yes and no, <laughs> depending. Uh, the question is, the, the notation here, and that's, that's a common confusion, and you have to, again, keep your tongue straight in your mouth. <laughs> the, the, the general notation here is chi-square alpha, in which alpha can attain different values. Now, when we apply it for the confidence interval formula, the, the notation is, The notation is, for instance, for alpha equal to 0 0.05, we should, for instance, find chi-square alpha half, which is then chi-square 0.025, and then we should choose the one that has an alpha of <laughs> here of 0 0.025. I mean, here, I mean, actually, this notation could have been anything here. You could have used theta or beta or delta or it's just a notation within the table to specify what is the probability to the right of alpha. And then we may use it in different occasions, right? We, we might also go look for one minus alpha half, which the, as we should go from the, from the confidence interval formula, and that would then be chi-square 0.975, and we would have to go find 0.975 as the alpha. So in that sense, it's the same, yes, but understood <laughs> specifically as I've, as I've uh, shown you here. Good. That was the small part we needed to add 